I'm Ted Coe, former high school and college mathematics teacher and the director of mathematics at Achieve. I'm Maya Daugherty, former reading and English teacher, and I'm the director of ELA and literacy for Achieve. The equipped rubrics help to establish the quality of instructional materials and tasks, but how do we know if students learned what we thought they would? How do we know that the assignments hit the target? Things that might seem obvious to teachers may be interpreted very differently by students. So, we analyze student work for progress toward the standards targeted in the assignment. Work students completed can be used as a strong indicator of proficiency for targeted standards. But, but you don't mean grading. No, Ted, not at all. What we're talking about is analyzing and evaluating levels of proficiency toward a standard, not the letter that goes on top of the page. This tool won't tell you how to grade your student's work. It will drive conversations about what it means for a student to be proficient on specific standards. So, the tool guides discussions around determining levels of proficiency on the targeted standards in order to determine the kind of progress students are making. And you may choose to use the tool in different ways. For example, a state or district might want to create a repository of annotated student work for the purposes of enlightening the community about levels of proficiency. A group of teachers might use the protocol to inform their own instruction of a particular task. A school or district might use this protocol for professional learning activities aimed at a deeper understanding of student proficiency for the standards. As with the other equipped tools, this process is intended to be done in teams of three to four. So we expect each reviewer to come to the conversation having conducted a review on his or her own. An individual to collective process helps to produce a final product that honors the diverse set of expertise and analysis. Ideally, you will review a task that comes from a highly rated lesson or unit as determined by a quip or a task rubric review. Make sure to choose a task that is central to the learning goals of the lesson or unit and features an open-ended problem that lends itself to various strategies and ways of showing below, at, or above grade level proficiency. For ELA or literacy, a task is defined as a reading, writing, or speaking activity that focuses a student's attention on demonstrating a thorough understanding of grade level complex text. Additionally, it should require the student to provide evidence to support his or her conclusions. For mathematics, a task is defined as a problem, a small set of problems, or an activity that focuses students' attention on a particular concept that can be used to provide evidence of student reasoning and proficiency for a specific standard. Advanced planning is required to collect student work samples. First, select a teacher or group of teachers to administer the task and collect a range of student work samples. Include a strategic selection of a range of abilities in the collection and aim for three to four samples at different proficiency levels. The reviewers then analyze the task, analyze alignment to the targeted standards, examine supporting instructional materials, analyze student work samples, and end by synthesizing their analysis and determining next steps. We've included an analysis chart to guide your conversations. Whether you use this process to create a repository of tasks, to serve as examples of levels of proficiency, to use in a professional development activity, to inform instruction, or to improve existing materials, the choice is up to you and we provide guidance to each of these ends. The Student Work Analysis Tool, along with the Equip rubrics, are freely available on the Equip website under an open license.